Hey everybody on Hammock Forums and YouTube, this is Chesapeake. I'm going to do a uh, short video review of the One Tigress Winter Underquilt. It was, uh, I believe it was $30 on uh, eBay. came from China, so it did take, it took about three weeks to get here. Um, they do say it's a winter weight uh, insulation. So tonight, it's supposed to get down to the mid, mid to low 20s here on the Chesapeake Bay. So I want to give it a shot. So let's uh, let's dive in here. First off, it's it's about nine and a half feet long. So on my 11 foot DIY argon hammock, it uh, it's a little short and uh, it's got a kind of a funky suspension. So let's take a look at that. The suspension, or the underquilt split right here on the ends. And it's got a small grow grain tab and it comes with two pieces of shock cord one for each side and you're supposed to i guess just loop it through both and then come up to your end and clip it there but since i'm using 11 foot hammock i uh need to kind of play around with it a little bit so what i did was i just put one shock cord loop on each side here on the head end and then ran them up to an S beaner and that kind of lets it spread out a little when I get on the diagonal some it's nine and a half feet long and uh, I believe it was 23 inches from top to bottom so it's not too terribly wide but uh, for me I'm only five six and on the diagonal I can get it you know to just cover me pretty good you know if I pulled it up a little more I'm sure you could uh, be able to, most average height users would be able to use it. So what I did was uh, I just threw on some uh, ridgeline quilt hooks to kind of keep it on my shoulder. And I did the same thing on the, the foot end with the ridgeline quilt hook, the S-beaner, and then the, uh, the two pieces of shot cord on each side of the loop. Uh, as far as quality goes, I uh, I didn't see any loose threads. It's sewn pretty well for uh, you know being a Chinese thirty dollar underquilt. Um, it is two pieces that have a seam that goes down the middle, but on the inside you uh, you really can't feel it. I didn't find any loose threads anywhere down in here. On this, uh, you know, this seam, uh, the outside is a 20D ripstop that's got a DWR treatment, and the inside is a 10D nylon that's not ripstop, so it's a little bit smoother. Um, as far as thickness goes and temperature rating, they say it's this winter one is rated. Between 10 and 20 degrees, and uh, you take a look thickness wise, it uh, is actually pretty thick. It's about twice as thick as my snug pack under quilt, and that's I mean, that's it's not puffed up really, it's just fully compressed or I mean, fully expanded. You know, that the fabric isn't sticking out much, and that's that's the actual thickness right there. So, um it's actually pretty thick, so I, 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 I don't know about 10 degrees, maybe. But, uh, I mean, so far I'm pretty impressed with it. I haven't used it yet. But, uh, I mean, quality-wise and insulation thickness, they, they're, they've held pretty true to what their claims are. It's, you know, on, on the description of it on the website, if you can see the ripstop, it does uh, have ripstop in it. Um, as far as insulation, they say they, they they say it's not it's not a climbing shield, but it is uh it's their own proprietary insulation, a certain technology that they've named it. Uh, but basically, it's a polyester batting that uh, you know does the same thing, I guess, as a climbing shield. But it's just the Chinese uh, Chinese version of climbing shield, so to say, I guess, from what uh, what I can tell on the, uh, the the tag that comes with it and on the stuff sack it says rated uh, you know 12 to 6 celsius 
320 grams per meter squared for the filling weight. It's breather polyester. That's the outside, the 20D rip stop. I'm used to hammock, obviously. The uh, the stuff sack is a the 1.1 rip stop. Got this kind of screen printed on. The it's got nice uh, webbing and buckles. And it's not shot cord, but you know pair cord there. And a cord lock. It's fairly big. Um, when it came, it wasn't compressed, which is nice. It was fully expanded in the stuff sack. So it didn't take, uh, it took about an hour for it to completely decompress once I got it out of the stuff sack. So it's not bad. I'll give you a wide shot here. So, I mean, it fits the 11 foot hammock, but uh, just barely. I mean, I, I, that's the only, so far, the only um, bad thing about it is the, the funky suspension. You know, it's just weird how they do it like this. I mean, I don't. There's, there's no way to adjust it to pull it up or anything. That's why I added the uh, the Ridgeline quill hooks on it. I figured they were kind of keeping it in place some. But I guess there are some other brands, <clears throat> excuse me, that are doing this way. Um, I think Yukon Outfitters, theirs is kind of like this. Um, some other ones in the, uh, like I should say, the budget, inexpensive underquilt market. But I get, a lot of them are going this way, I guess. To save some money maybe but um, for what it is so far I'm, I'm pretty impressed no loose seams anywhere it's stitched pretty well um, the shot cord this isn't the shot cord that came with it that is over here the standard shot cord thickness um, That's the gray green they have on it. It's just, uh, there we are. It's single stitched. And then uh, it's got a zigzag stitch on the ends to hold it in. All the ends are locked in with the back stitch. Same thing on this side. They're all locked, but they're single stitched. So we'll see how long this trim holds on. Uh, the way I set it up this way, it gives it a lot of stretch so we're not going I'm not going to rip these tabs out like you would I know you know like the snug packs a lot of people had a problem with putting them on too tight and then these tabs ripping out the way they were sewn on and then the snug pack like the cocoon I know they had a problem with it and uh, they had to redo it and they internally they made it uh, attached more internally so it wouldn't rip out but these are just sewn on there um, down the middle same thing it uh, comes here and then there's another piece over top of that one that runs the length that's locked in and then it uh, holds it together Another stitching there but it's only place in the whole quilt that has the neon yellow stitching maybe an interior stitching to be used um, so yeah it uh, it is fairly thick and it, it, there's no weight. It doesn't give a, a, a weight and I don't have a skin. But um, I mean, just for a comparison, I'd say it, I mean, size wise, it's shorter than the Snug Pack. I use that as an example because that's one I have. It's a little shorter than the Snug Pack, but it's thicker, about twice as thick. So I'd say, I mean, just feeling the two, I'd say this is a little bit lighter. And the Snug Pack is a little bit heavier, but obviously Snug Pack, from what I've been told, they weigh their insulation systems with the stuff sack and the shock cord included. Which, if you're going to go camping, you why wouldn't you weigh it that way? Um, the logo is screen printed on. It's nothing fancy, so that's going to peel off eventually. But it does have a DWR treatment on it. Um, I don't really like how big that is. It kind of looks like a college logo, I thought. <laughs> the One Tigers. So, uh, yeah, we're going to give it a shot tonight. I'm also going to be testing out.